A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we meditate on this verse, which at first seems a little strange to us. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 23. One can ask, why would a prudent man conceal knowledge? That's the part of it that uh, strikes me as a little odd. But then it is consistent with other verses. Proverbs 25 verse 2 It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. And so here we see that God presents us life which works and on the surface looks very simple. But in fact, as scientists have dug into the design of nature, we find that it is incredibly complicated. There is layer upon layer of intricate detail required for life to work. So no wonder a small disruption has large ramifications in its consequences. And this sophistication applies at the atomic level as at the galactic level and everywhere in between. When you buy a car, it has some obvious features like a steering wheel, like seats, like doors. It has a nice appearance. But when you lift the bonnet and look inside, if you look under the covers, then you find incredible detail which just makes no sense. Why haven't the designers given us a complete explanation of, of how every little bit of it works. Well, the reason is that you don't need to know the intricate details of every bit of a motor car for it to work. You don't need to know every intricate detail of how your body works for it to work. It has been designed so that it is as simple as possible to use, even though it is incredibly complicated. Any designer will follow that same principle that you make it straightforward to use, but you make it as sophisticated as necessary to achieve the task. And that is sometimes quite sophisticated indeed. So it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of a designer to make the whole thing look aesthetically pleasing and simple in concept to the user. But then in Proverbs 25 too, this, the compliment was, the glory of kings is to search out a matter. These hidden details are not there to, to take it away from us. And we are able to search them out, to work them out, and indeed to understand what the designer has understood. And so it is good to exercise our mind searching out these things. And when we understand them, we understand more of the greatness and glory of God. But the proverb that's our focus today is a prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. James says, My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. The prudent man doesn't show all that he knows immediately, because that will tend to confuse the listener. It may be a fault of mine to talk in too much detail, to give too much information, and the result is confusion. But the fool proclaims foolishness. He doesn't just proclaim the truth and the knowledge, he shows that he doesn't understand by all the things that he proclaims. And when you have people pronouncing against God and raising up all kinds of discussion against the scriptures and against God. Those of us who know the scriptures and the word of God are dismayed at the foolishness of these people. For example, I've heard it said on national radio by an accredited scholar that the Jews have no right at all to Jerusalem because 500 years ago it was controlled by the Muslims. Therefore, they have no right to it. But that denies history. 2,000 years ago, the Jews were there 
even though the Romans ruled, but the Romans respected the Jews as the occupiers of the land. We go back 3,000 years, David reclaimed Jerusalem as his capital. And you go back 4,000 years, you find that Melchizedek is king of Jerusalem, and he is a priest of the Most High God. So the very first reference of Jerusalem is as a city of God, a city who is ruled by a king who is a priest of God. This city has always been a focus for the worship of God. And Melchizedek was greater than Abraham, for Melchizedek blessed Abraham. But people come along with a little bit of knowledge and sprout it forth, showing their foolishness in making declarations which are false when you have a little bit more knowledge. The Jews did this, of course, when they rejected Jesus. In John chapter 7, we read that they sent their officers to arrest Jesus. But they came back saying, No man ever spoke like this man. And the Pharisees said, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? This crowd, they're accursed. They don't know anything. Nicodemus, one of them, stood up and said, But does our Lord judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? And they responded to him, Are you from Galilee? Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And they all went home. But of course they were wrong. Jesus was from Bethlehem, not from Galilee, in the first instance. Even though he lived in Galilee, and his ministry began in Galilee, yet he was from Bethlehem, the city of David. And furthermore, Jonah was from the area of Galilee. So there was a, an Old Testament prophet from that area. And Isaiah clearly prophesied that Messiah would arise in Galilee. Of course, they hadn't done their homework. For had they done their homework, they would have known the genealogy of Jesus and that he was from Bethlehem. So a fool proclaims foolishness. He justifies himself by making statements which, if examined, will not stand up to the truth. A prudent man conceals knowledge. He understands all the details, but he doesn't confuse people by giving them information that they're not ready to hear. Jesus was a master of this himself. When he spoke to the crowds, he always spoke in parables. It said specifically that without a parable he did not speak. In other words, he always used stories stories that were easily understood and grasped, although the hidden, deeper meaning of them was not always obvious. He was concealing knowledge. And Jesus explained to his disciples when they quizzed him about this, that to them was given the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven, but to those who are outside it was not given. Now, the information was given in a very palatable form, but it needed to be searched out. And so those who were seekers of the truth would come and search out the meaning of the parable. But those who were not so serious about it would enjoy the story and go home and maybe talk about it, but never come to an understanding. This all reflects what Isaiah said when he was commissioned to speak to the people. In Isaiah chapter 6, he has a vision of the Lord, the angels calling, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His iniquity is taken away. And then I heard a voice saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. So, we have here that Isaiah was to go and tell these people. But they would listen and not hear. They would see and not understand. Their eyes would be heavy. The information that Isaiah would give them would not make sense to them. And even today, the message of Messiah in the book of Isaiah is hidden to this people, the nation of Israel. They do not understand it. They tend not to read it, although it speaks so plainly of Jesus. 
the servant of the Lord, who died for their sin and rose for their justification. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness.